Okay, I am good to start. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm going to talk about Git rebasing today. Um, as developers, a key challenge is to manage complexity in our projects because projects can get very complex very quickly, even in small projects with small teams. With rapidly changing code bases and a growing development team, being able to communicate how and why our code evolves over time is crucial. As developers, we spend a lot of time considering names of variables, methods, and functions. We consider our code architecture and design. We write automated tests which act as documentation to our code. All these help communicate the intent of our programs. Another tool to help communicate our intent is a version control system. And in this talk, I will be using Git. Git has a commit history, which is useful for documenting intent. Git history is a living, ever-changing, searchable record that tells the story of how and why our code is the way it is. The ability to document code effectively using Git is just as important as being able to ship a feature, write clean code, or, or write readable tests. So Git history is kept forever. Unless you remove the, those commits, those commits will stay around. They are tied to the code change that they talk about. When the code changes, a new commit message will be written. This is great because the documentation never gets stale. It lasts exactly as long as the code it talks about. Commit messages also don't clutter up the code, yet they are just a step away if we need them. Every commit message that we write is available to anyone on the team um, that clones the repo. And they can be easily searchable in many ways. For example, we can do git log dash dash grep and give it a regex. So we can search all the contacts of the commit messages. We can search all the code changes. We can search by files touched, by author, by date. Um, but before I go to um, talk about rebase, and I'd like to introduce three good basic practices when using Git before discussing merging and rebasing. The first principle is making small commits. So first and firstly, and most importantly, make small thematic commits. Make your commits about a single change to your code base. Uh, to illustrate this, here's an example of a commit that does way too much. There are multiple issues addressed in this one commit. There is no way to revert, revert just one change separately. It would have been better if this commit would have been split into separate commits. It's worth thinking about, um, about small commits as a minimum viable commit. What's the smallest useful change that you can make to your code base? Another rule of thumb is to avoid the needing end in your commit messages. If you've done A and B, then maybe this should be two separate changes and two different commits. Uh, if you have made many changes but have not, that have not been staged yet, you can use the dash P flag when adding files to the index. Uh, the dash P uh, is for patch. It interactively chooses hunks of patch between the index and the work tree and add them to the index. This gives the user a chance to review the difference between adding modified content to the index. We're going to use this um, shortly. Second principle, write good commit messages. Another, um, although your code should be self-documenting, it does not tell the story of why the code is the way it is. Uh, or how it became to be. Since we've already broken the changes down into small pur purposeful commits, it means that we should have a good idea of the value of each one. Some people write commit messages that are a record of what actually happened, but that we can see in the code. Better way is to tell the story of how the project evolved. We want to be in the second camp. Uh, a good commit history gives us clarity of intent. It gives us clarity of thought and the ability to reason about our code. Um, I find that it helps to look at the commits messages from the perspective of another developer or even me six months from now. What questions might I be asking when looking at our code changes? What might not be immediately obvious? Those are not so ideal ones. So let's have a look at some examples of bad commit messages. There are so many out there. Um,
So let's have a look at some better ones. Always write commit messages as if you're explaining the change to a colleague sitting next to you who has no idea what's going on. Provide as much context as possible and as much useful detail as you can. Try and answer those five questions. Why is this change necessary? How does it address the issue? What side effects does this change have? Were other solutions considered? Uh, include a reference to a discussion, a resource, or a ticket. So for example, here's a suggested template. We have a short one-line title, so when, reviewing, when viewing our commits in a list format, it's a lot friendlier view. Uh, a good commit subject is written in the active present tense and as a command. Then we have an explanation of why the change is being made. If people want to know how they can change this in the future, they need to know what the intention of the change was. The description can be informal. It doesn't need to be written in a present tense command. In fact, it's usually better written informally as a message to your team. Describe the why. Why are we doing this? And lastly, when you make the, this commit message, uh, we know more about why we're making this change and how we are fixing or improving our code now more than anyone else uh, will ever do. So it can be useful to outline some of the context and alternative approaches that you considered. And lastly, include um, a link to some kind of a tracking system. Um, an example of a commit message that I did in a recent project that I worked on. So you can see the one line title, you can see a link to the relevant Trello card, and you can see an explanation of what was done and why. If you have a writer's block, and you don't know what words or verbs to use, here's the top 10, top 10 verbs for my current project, plus a few some other ones. Um, suggestions. Okay, principle number three is work in small feature branches and keep them once again as single purpose branches. Uh, the core idea behind the feature branch workflow is that all feature development should take place in a dedicated branch instead of the master branch. This encapsulation makes it easy for multiple developers to work on a particular feature without disturbing the main code base. It also means that the master branch will never contain broken code, which is a huge advantage for continuous integration environments. Working in feature branches makes it possible to leverage pull requests, which are a way to initiate discussions around the code. They give other developers the opportunity to sign off on a feature before it gets integrated into the official project. Or if we get stuck in the middle of a feature, we can open a pull request asking our teammates for suggestions. The point is that pull request makes it inc incredibly easy for the team to comment on each other's work. It also makes it easier for everybody to know what actually happens with other members of the team and what they're working on. A suggested workflow will start with creating a new branch. And as you can see, when I create a new branch, I start with uh, my initials at the beginning and then what I'm working on. Then I'll work on the branch, I make some changes, um, I check the status, add some files, and then I commit. I push the changes to my, uh, the branch to origin. So you can do it with the first one. I usually use the second one, which is a, short, a nice shorthand. I just do git push origin head, and it creates a new branch for me. Uh, or pushes the existing branch, if I already have one. Then I open a PR for feedback. I implement changes based on the feedback. Then I rebase master on my current branch interactively and push updated branch back up. You will notice that when I push them back up, I need to add the... I need to add the uh, flag dash F, which is force push. Since we rebased the current branch, we have rewritten the history. Therefore, we have to force push back to origin. Force pushing should only be done on feature branches, so not to rewrite the history on master, because if you do, other people will have trouble um, grabbing your changes again. And then lastly, uh, I merge into master with fast forward. So I get to check out master, and I git merge with the dash dash fast forward only and my branch. And we're going to talk about why in a second. And I think the last thing that we do is we clean up the branches. Our git push origin dash my, feature, my branch name will delete the branch from origin from the remote. And then git branch uh, dash d and the feature and the branch name will delete it locally. If it hasn't been 
uh, if all the changes are not currently in um, master and you still want to delete the branch, you will need to use um, dash capital D instead. Merging versus rebasing. So Git merge and Git rebase offer the same service. They incorporate commits from one Git branch into another. The key distinction lies in how the result is achieved. When, uh, by default, the merge command is set to uh, dash dash no fast forward. And what it does is if we have changes on our branch, it creates a new commit, uh, a merge commit in the feature branch that ties together the histories of the two branches together, giving us a branch structure that looks something like that. In a project that I worked on uh, previously, uh, master was very active and merging can pollute the log history quite a bit. Often merging changes into master can result in our history becoming tangled and difficult to read. This becomes even more of an issue when you have several feature branches being developed in parallel. For collaborative workflow where team members read the logs for insight and context, readability is important. Whereas merge commits can clutter up our logs and make it much more difficult to understand the flow of the project history. This is from an actual project I joined. Rebasing. Interactive rebasing gives us the opportunity to alter commits as they are moved to the new branch. This is even more powerful than an automated rebase since it offers complete control over the branch commit history. Typically, this is used to clean up messy history before merging a feature branch into master. So to um, rebase interactively, we will need a dash i for interactive. And while the rebase, we will have an option to, if we have any conflict, to use either continue or to abort. So let's play a bit with that for a second. Uh, if I can, there. Uh, and I want this. And we'll do this a lot bigger. <laughs> is, that, is that okay? So let's start with, actually, and the, let's create a directory to work in. We're gonna change into that, and we're gonna create a couple of branches. But first of all, let's start by creating a file, and let's do, so if we look at a file, ah, if we look at a file, we'll see that we have some text in it. And then we're gonna initialize our git repo. We're going to add a file and we're gonna do and this is how we start with a new git repo. So let's start with creating a new branch. So git checker dash b, so it will take us to the new branch. And we're gonna do it. EM for my initials, and we're gonna do fix conference. Let's gonna open our index, and we're gonna make a change. And we're gonna come here, and we can change that to um, a title case. And save that. So if you do git status, we had one file that's changed. If you do git diff, we will see that we changed to uh, title case. So now we're gonna add that file, and we're gonna do uh, change to title case. Oh. Then I wanna make another change for now, and really I wanna make this to be a heading. So again, if we look at git diff, we have one change, and we're gonna do, we're gonna add that file, and we're gonna do git commit dash m. Um, with a heading. Are we okay so far? Cool. Um, if we check out master, and we do, um, we check, uh, if we check our branches, we see that we're currently back on master. Let's create another branch. 
for the sake of this exercise. So we're going to do git checkout dash b again, my initials. And in this case, we forgot that this is 2019. So let's do add year. So if we look at the branches now, we are on the third branch that we are on. Let's open the file again and let's add 2019. Uh, git diff, we have that. So let's do git add all, git create, um, add conference year. And let's do the same as we've done before in the other branch. So let's make it a heading again. So let's open that and go to beginning. And so we're going to have some conflicts. We're going to see in a second. So if we have that change, we're going to add that file. We're going to commit that. We're saying. Um, Awesome. So if we look at our history, we have a couple of commits. And um, yeah, and let's go back to master now. Check out master. Um, I want to, usually with merging, uh, um, the no. Um, the no fast forward is the default, but in my case, I changed my default. So if you look at my config, and we're going to grab for merge. Ah, uh, sorry. Um, git um, config dash dash list. If you're going to grab for merge, you will see that uh, mine is set automatically to fast forward only. So I don't have to define that every time I merge my branches. So to merge one of the branches in, I will need to do specifically um, define that. So I'll do git merge uh, no fast forward. And I'll do, let's do the second one that we have. So add the year. And then it opens up an editor for me to add a com and merge commit message. And in this case, I can leave that as is. And I'm going to save that. And it created and it merged that branch into my history. So if we look now into master, we can see those changes plus my merge commit message. Uh, I, if we do git log with dash dash one line, we get just a one line of all the changes that we have. So it's a bit more friendly to read. But um, I have an alias um, that makes it a bit nicer to have a look at things, which I call lol. Uh, and uh, you can see that my branch actually diverged from master. And if you have a lot of that, you will have quite a few, um, quite a few of those in the view. So I want to I wanna have a look later what happens when we do rebasing. So in this case, if I try, if um, let's go to the other branch that we have, which was fix the conference, and um, actually before that, let's go back, go back to master. If I try and do git merge now with my other, uh, with my other branch, so. Um, no, fast forward, and it was fixed. We will get a conflict that we can't actually merge because some changes have been on top of another. So we really need to rebase the other branch, master on the other branch, before we can put it back into master. So if you look at git status, I have some things, and I want to git reset. Git reset. Yeah, so git status. It's now just ready, ready to be um, staged into committing. I'll do git uh, reset. Uh, git, sorry. And we are back to normal. So git status. We are. Um, Still have conflict, all the conflicts are fixed, but you're still merging. I don't care about that for a second. I want to take out my other branch. 
So it was fixed conference, and I'm going to rebase my master on top of that. So what I do that, I do git rebase. I'm going to do interactively, and I'm going to grab master. And when I do that, it opens up a window to let me know what I want to do. And as you can see, those are my two commits, and I can reorder them in a different order. And they will appear differently, sorry, do this. And then the history will have a different order of my commits. But in this case, I don't care about that. I want to talk about the other options that you have. So as you can see, you can pick a commit. So if the commit is in the list, it will be, it will be committed to master. I can reword the commit message. I can um, use the commit, but edit the actual code along the way. I can squash a commit, but that means taking two commits together and squash them together, um, but keep the two messages so I can work out the message as I'm doing that. Fix up is the same, is merging two commit messages together, but actually discarding this, the, the commit's log message along the way, the second one. I don't think I've ever used exact. Drop is the same as just removing the line from, um, from that list. So if I do that, that commit messages, that changes are gone. They're not going to exist. And I don't think I've used any of the other one. So we're happy with that. That's fine. Uh, so we're going to save those changes that we want. And we get that we have, we cannot apply this commit message, the change to title case, because we have some changes. So let's have a look at. Um, Git status, and we have that one that's both have been modified in both head and in our branch. So we're going to, and if we look at git diff, we will see that one of them has the capital C and one of them has the 2019. So we want to merge them together. Um, so we're going to do uh, index. And that shows me what's in head. So this is what's on my master. And I can remove that. And I can remove uh, that. And in this case, uh, I really want to make the other one a capital. So I'm just going to come here and manually do the change. Sometimes you don't need to do that. But in this case, that's it. This is my change. I no longer have a conflict. So I can save that file. And now, but. If you look at your git status, it's still waiting to be merged. So I still need to do uh, add that. And once I added that file, I can do git rebase uh, dash dash continue. This time, um, I get my second one, change to a title case, and I'm fine. I can continue with that. But now I have a conflict about the heading. So let's look at what, um, what's, what's the change that we get. So we, we see that in both cases, really, we want the top one now. I don't care about the second one. So let's open index again. Uh, let's open index again. And go up, uh, sort of, and remove that. And really, I want to just keep that in the file. Save that, and that's done. I still need to do the same thing. So if I look at git status, I have a file that's ready to be committed. So I need to add that. Uh, and then I could do git rebase continue. And if I look at my git log, I have my commit history. Now, if we look like we did before with the one line on my alias shortcut, you will see that one, I don't have my pesky commit me, uh, merge commit message. And two, I also don't have uh, that uh, branching out for master. It's just like a linear history of my commit messages. Does that make sense so far? Cool. Uh, let's go back to here for a second. That was my coding. So we talked about um, all those options over here. Most of those options over here that gives you uh, git rebase uh, allows you to rewrite commit messages, quickly remove commit, which snuck into a different branch, combine commits by squashing several commits into one, and then reorder them as well. 
Uh, what you get, you get um, a history that looks like that. Uh, interactive rebase allows us to revise the development history before sharing. By revising the history, we can get a linear commit history that better tells the story of, um, about what we intended to do instead of a blow-by-blow -blow account of all the missteps that we took along the way. Now, talking about rebasing, I really want to talk about auto squash and fix-ups. So it's fairly common for a feature branch to be squashed down to somewhere between one to four commits uh, before it's been merged. Following this practice, there are a few uh, Git features that can make our interactive rebase quicker and easier, basically using fix-up commits and getting interactive rebase to auto-squash them for us. So let's do one more branch before we finish up with the talk. Um, so let's go back to our project, and in this time, we're going to create one last branch Sorry, we rebased here. We did not merge it back to master. So let's do that. Uh, so let's get uh, check out master. And you can see that uh, we don't have the history that we have in our branch. So all we need to do is we need to do git merge, um, fast forward only, and give it the branch name. And that's it. And we have the exact same history as that we have in the branch. So let's start with one last branch. So let's do git checkout, um, add some copy to our website. Let's open index, and in this case, let's start by adding some um, copy. So if we look at git diff, we added some text, let's add this file and commit it by saying um, let's also add some navigation. So, and let's go up and add, uh, what do we have? We have a program. We have uh, a schedule, we have speakers, and that's the venue. We are happy with our navigation so far, so if we look, this is our change, so let's add that. But now we realize that one, we forgot the, uh, we forgot the home link, and two, we also have, if you look, we have an extra line in the end of the file and we don't like that. So let's change that. So if we open the index and we go to the bottom and remove the last line and then we'll go up to here and let's add a home link. So now if I look at my diff, I have two changes, but they are unrelated to one another. So let's add them um, interactively. So let's do git add dash p, and it shows me both. And it, if you see on the bottom, I have options to stage in this hunk, and it gives me yes, no, quit, all. Uh, not sure what these, but I usually use S for split. So let's do S to split them into two different commits. So I'll grab the first one, and I'll say, yes, I want that. So I'll say yes. And then the next one, and I'll say, no, I don't want this one. So now if I look at my uh, git status, I have a change that is a stage to be committed and one that isn't. So, and if I want to look, I can see that it was, um, I need, this is what's haven't been committed yet. If I want to see what is stage, and I need to do that, and I see that this is my home link. So let's write a commit message. Uh, uh, forgot a link to home. And that is a mistake that we're going to fix soon. And then our last change that we have um, is the new line. So we want to remove that. So we're going to add that, and we're going to, but in this case, instead of giving it a commit message, I'm going to use a fix up for that. So if I look at, this is really belongs into this commit. So I'm going to grab the share here, 
and I can see that it's already staged to committing. So I'm going to do git commit dash dash fix up and give it the shell that I want to fix it on. So now if I look at my history, I have four commits. I have add copy, add nav, forgot one that should be ready to go with nav, and one for fix up. Now, if we, look at, uh, if we look at my git config again, uh, where is the one I wanted? Um, git config uh, dash dash list, and we're going to grab for squash. You'll see that I have auto squash true that we will need soon. So, but I'll do it with defining that in our um, uh, now, but generally, because this is set to true, I don't need to define that manually. So if I do now git rebase interactive, and I want the fix up to be included and fixed itself, I'll need to do dash dash auto squash. And I want to rebase master on top of my branch. You will see that because I did a fix up commit, it already picked it up and it knows that it needs to go into add copy and it will squash them for me automatically like magic. This one over the other hand was a mistake that I want to fix. So in this case, we're going to do a squash to show what happened. So I'm going to change the pick and I'm going to change it to a squash and then see what happens when we rebase. So I'm happy with what's going to happen. I'm going to do save and close. And in this case, it shows me um, this is a combination of two commits that add nav and forgot to home link. So really, this mesh set should only be add navigation because I don't care about this anymore. And I save that. And it already automatically fixed up my other commit. So if I look at my history, I now only have the two ones that make sense. I don't have all the mistakes that I've done along the way. And then I can easily merge that back into master. So the way we've done that before. Um, what do I want? I want that. And I want this. So we looked at that uh, we used a fix up with a SHA. So we've seen to take advantage of this, we need to tell Git which commit the new changes should be merged with, which is why we added the specific SHA. Uh, Git rebase dash dash interactive dash dash auto squash picks up on the commits with a message that begins with a fix up or squash. Um, we can set rebase to auto squash uh, by default by using this command, which is what I have set in my, in my git config. Uh, so things, things to remember when rebasing. Rebase often to grab uh, recent updates for master. Use rebase when you want to keep a linear commit history and never use rebase on a public shared branch, i.e. never rebase on master because you're going to make everybody's life hell. Um, so to repeat just a few things that we talked about, if we spend as much time ensuring that our commits are well factored as well as we do with refactoring our codes and our tests, it will save us and the team time and pain in the future. So some things to remember. Make small feature-specific commits. Ensure that one change, to make one change at a time, make it simpler to work on. It makes it easier to revert to a specific change and rather than having to revert multiple commits that need, you know, that need to be reverted. Uh, remember to explain why we've made the change uh, in the first place. This is the perfect opportunity to reflect on what we did and to provide context on the change. Work in small thematic feature branches. Rebase frequently to incorporate upstream changes. Revise, review and revise the history before sharing it with the rest of the team. Keep it linear. Uh, to convey linear thought and the ability to understand what's going on with a code at any point in time and auto squash your commits. Uh, thank you very much.